Hi everyone, it's Anna with Bruce City Thrifts. Today we are at the Goodwill in Brown Deer, Wisconsin. And I haven't been here for quite a while. The last time I came here, I was feeling like my luck might be running out at this location. It used to be very lucky for me, but I haven't done so well lately. It is a Monday after work, not the best day for thrifting, but we will see what we can do. So let's hit it. Today I start in the tchotchke aisle, which is not where I usually start at this Goodwill. I usually start over by the purses and bags, but I am in the tchotchke aisle and I notice this fine looking clock and next to it a glass clock. And I do think, you know, some of those pieces are collectible and bring good money, but I don't know anything about clocks. Instead, I grab this baggie with a I'm guessing that's a dinosaur skull. It looks like one of those sets that you put in a garden and, you know, in the grass or near your flowers. And um, I think it's really cute and interesting. I'm not sure what it's made of. It's quite lightweight, um, but it's weird enough that I'm really interested. So it goes in my cart. Next, I pick up this wild strawberry Wedgwood ashtray, and I've actually picked up this very item at this store before. I do like the pattern very much, but it is, there's a lot of wild strawberry items on eBay, so I put it back on the shelf. And right here, I noticed this art glass votive holder. It's a nice piece, it's heavy. I do like the polka dot design and the colors, but I decided to put it back. I noticed this glass sun catcher with a wrought iron or pot iron, cast iron frame. I'm holding it upside down. It actually is most likely a key ring holder, but while it's really cute and I do love the bumblebee design, the color was flashed on and it was already rubbing off in some areas. So I put it in my cart, but it did eventually go back on the shelf. On the lower shelf here, I noticed this piece. It is etched images onto stone. It's a quite heavy piece. And you can see that the images are of what appear to be Alaska and it's signed and while I really liked it and I liked the hand done quality, it's a little too beat up for me to keep. I have a dickens of a time trying to put that bag that keeps falling off the shelf back on the shelf. I'm actually reaching for this hand painted sun catcher. It I can, I will show it to you in a second here. It is a hummingbird and floral design. It's by Amia Studios and it's got the stained glass look to it and it's just beautiful with really vibrant colors. So um, that beauty goes right in my cart. I thought this was an interesting piece. It is what looks to be maybe some sort of a group or family together raising their hands to the sky and each of the figures is holding a little glass bead. One, one of the beads was missing. But then I pick up this ceramic trinket box. I won't try to pronounce the name on the label there. I will hurt the ears of any French speakers, but it's a very pretty box with each of those little panels has a wild animal or a flower. There's some enameling and it is really nice. So it goes in my cart. Still in the tchotchke area. No, I am now in the candle area. I see these candlestick holders. Now, I am pretty sure these are mass produced, but they are hand painted and they are Jack in the pulpit which are gorgeous and I kind of can't help myself. I'm like, I think these are not that uncommon, but I just love the painting on them. I love the color scheme and I love the fact that it's a Jack in the pulpit. So I decide I'm going to take those with me. They're ceramic, 
could have been produced in Mexico, although they're not signed from Mexico. And um, just, uh, I really like them. Pretty summer candlesticks. So, yep, we're going to take those. Only $2.99 each. There's a little bit of money. Oh, and then I had passed by a cart, like, on the fly. Reached out and grabbed this walking by a cart. It is a wooden skull. <laughs> and I think that is so fun for Halloween. Yes, I'll put that in my cart, too. Doll chairs can sell. I've sold a few myself. The ones that you want to keep an eye out for are the American Girl dolls chairs or uh, hand-carved, ornately styled chairs can do pretty well. These would maybe go, they just might sit for a while. So I left this one on the shelf for that reason. This casserole looks like it could have some age to me. It has a basket weave design on the sides, a deep orange glaze, and I really, it was hefty. I liked it. Uh, I'm not sure who the maker was, and I left it on the shelf. Below was a nice set of plates. The maker is Syracuse, and I believe this is a vintage pattern. It's called Carefree. My eyes were drawn to this ceramic figurine. This is a vintage piece. It has, you can tell by the labels, it's got some age. And the subject matter was really old fashioned. It's like a peddler or a peddler with um, a cart and a monkey. And honestly, it was all about the monkey for me. Um, I <laughs> really don't typically pick up things like this, but I had to take a look because of the monkey. Scanning the shelves. Looking, looking, what catches my eye? Well, the things that catch my eye first are these figurines. They are, they feel like chalkware. They've got age, as you can tell from the labels on the bottom. This one is called Roller Queen, I believe. And they look like they're maybe 1970s, but honestly, the the vacant, empty eyes were kind of creepy to me, so I just left those behind. Then I noticed this apple-shaped wooden puzzle box. It it's, uh, has all its pieces. One of them was over to the side. Um, I do love a good puzzle box, but in this case, the apple was not the most interesting shape to me, so I left that on the shelf. Then I noticed this mug, and I had a dickens of a time trying to read it. I just kept thinking, I, what, is, what does it say? It has the, the writing looks like 1970s um, tight style of writing. Inside is this really cute, funny little figurine. What, he's just napping in there and just totally at ease. And um, on, I looked on the back and tried to read back there too. So it's a language that I don't know. And while I like the look of it and I love that little guy, I didn't pick it up because I didn't know what it said. Sometimes you just go with your gut. This is a piece that, look at that robin's egg blue. I, I thought, oh my gosh, that's a stunning blue color. I saw there was a marking on the bottom and I thought this is a definitely a good substantial piece. I love the glaze, I love the color, and it is Italian. And I love the braided handle on it. There's no chips, no damage that I can see. So I put that in my cart. What a beautiful ceramic picture. Back on the shelf is a canister that has the shape and coloring of a piece of peppermint candy. And below it is a canister, and I did recognize the style of the artwork on this canister. This is Marjolene Baston, and she did a lot of work for Hallmark back in, I believe, the 80s and maybe the 90s. And I really do like her style of artwork. There's her signature there. 
Um, but the canister does not go for a whole heck of a lot, so I decided to leave it on the shelf. I noticed this creamer. It has the painting style of a Japanese piece of Nippon pottery. Below it is a tureen with a lid that looks to be potentially nortake. And then I noticed this aqua colored blue glass canister, which is very pretty. And then I pick up this piece of handmade pottery. Um, I think these are, these on eBay are called incense holders, butter trays, uh, trinket trays. I think this is just a multi-purpose piece of pottery. This one has an artist's signature and it's a nice glaze, so I put it in my cart. I thought this swirled dish was really pretty. It is... Um, a little more contemporary but the design is a really nice one and uh, it would have been nice for olives <laughs> in this world and then I noticed this piece of uh, I think this pottery had a little more age and it was a piece of Hallmark pottery and I do like the shape and the glaze I thought possibly it was Frank Coma when I first looked at it but it, it's Hallmark and while nice I also left that on the shelf know a lot about Pyrex but to my eye this one looked to be a, a kind of unusual color so I pulled it out to take a look at it it has a wheat sheaf uh, design on it but it also has a lot of chipping I took a quick look online and it doesn't seem to be one of the really um, high um, value ones so I left it on the shelf I'm still looking around the China area and I noticed this hand painted ceramic cheese board. Um, taking a look at the back, it is made in Italy and it is a sur la table or sur la table piece. And uh, I, yeah, I will take a hand painted ceramic cheese plate. I can imagine all kinds of cheeses on that one and it goes in my cart carefully. In the glasses area, I notice, of course I notice, these Wexford tumblers. <laughs> these Wexford tumblers by Anchor Hawking. Um, yes, I my eye is attuned for a Wexford, and I just, I like highly patterned glass, and I just really like the pattern on Wexford um, items, and so I pull them in just to, to kind of take a look at them, and I decide I was going to see if there is a set and I was able to find more so I kept scanning and looking for more Wexford but then a couple of the pieces that I picked up were distinctively lighter weight and I'm kind of like the heft of them was different the feel of them was really different and that's the case with that one it felt a lot lighter and I decided I would only take the ones that had that hefty feel and that I thought were truly Wexford. So let's do a cart review, shall we? It turns out that the items I got really are pretty contemporary. This first one, the ceramic cheese board by Sur La Table or Sur La Table. I really like it. I love the painting, and uh, but it's not a very old piece. And neither is this Italian picture. It is uh, got that robin's egg blue and the braided handle, and that is not a chip. That's just some schmutz. But I really do like that picture of the Wexford glasses, the tumblers I looked at. These were the three that had the more substantial feel to them, so I took those three. Here is the pair of hand-painted ceramic Jack in the Pulpit candlestick holders that I think are very pretty. Again, not that old. This wooden hand carved skull is just, it's just goofy and it's gonna, it's gonna be a great item to put up during uh, when we get closer to Halloween. 
I do like this ceramic incense holder, whatever you want to use it for, multi-purpose ceramic piece. It's a piece of studio art and it is signed. This is a box of cards that I will use in my eBay business. This is the French um, lidded trinket box that I won't try to pronounce the name. I will butcher it. And finally, we've got this really pretty hand-painted hummingbird sun catcher with the stained glass style. And it's just a really lovely piece as well. There you have it. Hey, well, that was, that ended up being a pretty good trip. It was a little slow going at first, and I was a little bit worried about finding something that I liked, but then we found that Italian pottery, and I think things turned around. I do love the robin's egg blue of that picture. I think that's a really beautiful piece. I, I face it, I'm in love with Wexford. I might as well just give in and start buying it when I find it for myself, I guess. But no, those those tumblers actually do go for a pretty decent profit. So I picked up three of the five that I found because they the three of those did have the right heft. The other two were different and a lighter weight. So I just went with those three heavyweights. And then up uh, and then that wooden scary Halloween skull mask thing. I just think that was fun, weird. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that does on eBay. So thanks for coming along. I hope you had a good time. Like my channel, subscribe, comment, and come back again. Because if you're thrifting on, I'm thrifting on. And we will do this again. Bye-bye.